Today I have a really neat story about one of the investigations that we did several years ago. Um, it's with the Boone Tavern. Um, that is a very, very old tavern in Berea, Kentucky. As a matter of fact, it was built in 1909. And what was really interesting is when I looked up the history about this unique tavern, each of the bricks that were used to build this wonderful tavern was actually uh, made by the students of the Berea College. You see, Berea College was first, and then the students uh, and uh, the faculty and, and the population came and was actually built around the Berea College. So I, th I found it very interesting that in 1909 when they built this tavern, and they officially built it at first to house a lot of the traveling professors and other students that might be coming in and out. Um, and then, uh, you know, later on, then it, you know, became just a, a, a tavern for travelers. But in 1909, it was built with the bricks that were actually made by the students of Berea College. I thought that was really neat. Um, so years ago, I was actually invited to come to the Berea, uh, Berea and do an investigation there at the Boone Tavern. Um, and it was really exciting. It was a lot of fun. I think the best part of any investigation is when you meet the staff, the people that work there, and you hear all their stories. And you know, you always hear uh, a, a lot of the stories around what happened in the kitchen are stories uh, where uh, guests will come down to check out and they'll ask questions about, does this normally happen? Or I think I saw this. And fortunately for me, the day that I went on the first uh, interview, first I go in and interview. And when I got to talk to some of these um, staff members, they had been working there for a while, for a few years. So I think I went back in like 2005, and then I went again in 2011. And when I went back in 2011, I'll have to be very honest with you, I seemed to get a little more activity. And I think that was because I decided to do a, a ghost getaway weekend. And we had uh, about 20 couples that signed up for it. And what that involved was they arrived on Friday. And so we had a Friday dinner. And then Friday night, we had one class of something. You know, normally when I do these Ghost Getaway Weekends, we'd have like five or six classes. Uh, maybe not that many, maybe four. And so what we would do is, uh, and one class would be about how to use the instruments, or one class would be about the type of hauntings that are going on to educate the ghost hunters before we actually got to do the ghost hunt. Sometimes it would be mythology and theory and, you know, that kind of thing. So it was a lot of fun. So on Friday night, they came in, they had a dinner, we did a class, and then we did a ghost investigation. And I think Friday night, we did the basement. We split up because we had so many people. We had about 40. We would split up in two groups. And uh, and uh, we when we went down into the basement, we would have our regular EVP sessions. And then we would have, uh, we would do photos. And we got some really interesting photos. At the time, though, we didn't get, we only got one uh, apparition. And I, I, I'll tell you a little bit more about the apparition. We And we actually got the apparition during a class. So that, that was a lot of fun. So um, the first thing that I like to do in these Ghost Getaway Weekends, of course, like I said, on Friday night, we do the introduction and we meet everybody. And then I give them a layout of what we're going to do on Saturday morning when we wake up. Well, when we woke up, of course, everyone uh, went down for breakfast. And that was included in the, in the package. I always would include that in the package price. And then after... Uh, breakfast, believe it or not, it's such an interesting little town. And because there's so many students there, there's a lot of students that are, are into art and crafts. And so they have little shops and things like that that you can go through. So from about 10 o'clock until 1 o'clock, uh, the ghost hunters were actually freed up to where they could walk around town or they could actually just walk around the hotel and continue to take pictures and things if they wanted to. 
And then around one, one o'clock, everybody would come back. And uh, of course, when they would come back, we didn't offer lunch at the time. They needed to get lunch while they were out. So they would come back around 1, 1.30, and we would do a, another class. Uh, it, it would be a class that would be based on a subject in ghost hunting. And then uh, after that class, we did go and get uh, ready for our dinner. Our dinner was very, very uh, extensive and, and really a lot of fun. And then after dinner, we would continue with the ghost investigations. Then on Sunday, we would get up and we had breakfast one more time. And that's when we got a chance to say goodbye to everybody. And also, some of us would kind of hang out and, and, and sit around and talk about some of the things that actually happened during the ghost investigation. So what I wanted to share with you today um, is I've got a couple of clips that uh, we use during the investigation. And in one of the clips, um, uh, Susan Rushing, Rushing is a very dear friend of mine and, and a very talented psychic medium. And we love ghost hunting together because I don't know what it was. We just had a connection. And I would give her a meter and then I would take a meter and we'd stand apart to where we were in, in each other's field. And I would ask a question of the ghost, like, um, uh, uh, did you work here? Something of that nature. And uh, my meter would go off with the answer of yes. And then I would look at her and we would wait. And sure enough, her meter would go off with yes. We had different indications, like my meter would go off uh, if it made a sound meaning yes, and if it did nothing meaning no. Her meter was just a little bit different, and her meter was, uh, it would uh, be once for yes and two for no. So it was a little different, uh, I guess a little different sound when the yes and no questions came through. So it was kind of unique. And in this actual video that you'll be watching, you will see Susan and I uh, conducting a question uh, segment. And within that segment, we're asking these questions, and I'll wait and see what my meter does, and it would go off like a yes, and then I would look over at Susan's. We'd wait just a few seconds. It didn't take long, and then she would respond, and, and it was so uh, interesting how if I got a yes, she got a yes. If I got a no, she got a no. Uh, and when we have something like that going on, especially with these meters, and we're not uh, influence them in any way by shaking them or holding them up or moving them around. We're being very still with these meters so that we're not actually accused of kind of uh, shaking it up to where the meters go off. It's really a good validation when you can have these meters. Some people use flashlights and some people nowadays there's so many like iPhone, smartphone types of applications applications that you can put on your phone and use those as well and and now uh, since we've done these investigations and that type of uh, those types of instruments have come through the iPhone I've started using those as well and you'd be surprised that when those go off and they're very different and and they will also validate some of the things that we're doing so through uh, what we're going to do is um, I want to show you that one uh, video of me and we have some uh, of the people that are around us or the actual people that signed up to do the uh, Ghost Getaway Weekend. And then Susan is uh, like in front of me, but you can only see the back of her when we were filming. And so... Um, you'll be able to see our responses. You'll hear our questions, hear our response. I hope you enjoy watching this uh, little um, video. It's only, I think it's about four minutes long. It's not that long. But I think if you're really interested in ghost hunting, it's kind of a unique uh, method that we use. I think you'd uh, enjoy using it. Now, my meter that I used was just what we call the ghost meter and the meter that, um, that um, Susan was using, we refer to as the Ghost Meter Pro. So they're similar, but a little different. And so therefore, that's what, why we wanted to use two different ones. Uh, we just felt like the credibility uh, would be a little more applicable when they would go off. And you could see that, there, that we were working together as we communicated with these um, videos. 
Okay. Uh, is, is there more than one of you? Yeah, there is. Yes, yes, yes. You get it too. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, are there any children among you? I don't have anything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to know, um, are you the one that yes. threw the ice thing? Okay. You did. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, do you mind that we're here and visiting with the spirits tonight? Do you mind that? Yeah, it's perfect. Are you happy with the people that are here? Do you love the people that are that are here? How do you... You do? Thank you. Thank you. I, I know they'll be happy about that, so thank you. This is so I got, awesome. a, I got a yes from this one, too. Okay, great. This is really, really awesome. Yeah. So, <laughs> thank you, thank you. You guys don't know, are the college kids here? Where are the college kids? Right. Yeah. For you to be able to capture something like this. Now, there is no way for us to, uh, and, and for some reason, Susan and I are, are pretty good at this because <laughs> Seems like every time we go on a ghost investigation, we grab these meters. We can make them go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. So thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for coming through for oh, us. Thank you. Awesome. Is there okay. any way um, the ice scoop on top of the ice machine? You know where that is? Yeah. Can you make that move? Could you make it move? Oh, wait. This one said yeah. Two. Could you make it move now? You were asking earlier about it. You didn't have to do it when you first walked in and take a picture of it or anything. Because if you could go back and look at that, it may have. I just didn't know. Um, did you used to work here? No. Oh, one, two, three, four. Whoa. I'm like, okay. Just one for yes, two for no. Did you used to work here? Your your beater's good. It doesn't look kind of weird stuff. <laughs> um, did you stay here as a guest? Yes. Um, do you hang out in the kitchen? No? Yeah. Did you like to cook? Yeah, no. Did you like to eat? Sure. <laughs> no. Are you attached to someone here in the kitchen? Yes. Um, somebody that works here in the kitchen is, is one of your favorites. Oh, gone. Oh, I hope you enjoyed that. I know uh, recently I've been going through a lot of my investigations and I f really had forgotten about this one. And when I went back and viewed it before I decided to do this video, <laughs> I really loved it. I, I was like, oh, oh, I've got to share that one. Now, it has been on YouTube for a while because I think this investigation was maybe in 2011. I'm not real sure, but I think it's about then. Um, and so... Um, it, it was a lot of fun to, to re-watch it, and I felt like uh, this will be a good one to share. Now, while we were at the um, tavern uh, and we were having classes, uh, at one point I wanted to demonstrate there was, a, uh, there was a, an application that I used. As a matter of fact, it's no longer. They took it down. I wish they hadn't. But what you would do is you would set your camera up, and, the, it, and, you, and I had it leaning toward the crowd. So you would set your camera up, and then uh, I, as I would talk to the spirits, I said, if there are any spirits in this room, if you'll come forward, what would happen if there was any uh, activity, spirit activity, uh, the camera was set to pick up that energy and then it would just start going off. And so while I'm talking and I'm asking the uh, spirit to come forward, um, my camera started going off. Of course, we couldn't see anything. I mean, we're all looking around going, oh my gosh, I, that's a good indication. So I immediately stopped, picked up my phone, and then we reviewed the picture. And it was awesome because it picked up a full 
apparition of a man stepping up on stage. You can see the the people sitting down in the rows, you know, ahead, and he he blocks those. He sits st stands on stage, and we did actually capture this apparition just for a few seconds, and he's very detailed. You can see his eyes and his mustache. Now, when you look at the picture, you're going to see a lot of, like, sparklies, and that's just uh, the way that it would capture images of energy. It would be through these little sparklies. So uh, that's going to be a, something that you might think, wow, wonder what, what that is. I just think it's part of that energy. So I'm going to show you that picture as well. Wasn't that awesome? I mean, did you really notice? You could see the mustache and everything. I hope you can. I hope you can. So that was also um, a really uh, good capture while we were there. And I liked it because when I can demonstrate to my students different instruments, like sometimes I will take EVP recorders and I'll say, now this is the kind of questions you ask. Let's see if we can get anything. And this will be in a classroom. It won't be like on an actual investigation. And then I'll get a voice uh, that will come through. So that was uh, pretty exciting while we were there at the Boone Tavern doing an investigation. Um, so now the next video that I want to talk to you about is uh, where we actually went down. Let me uh, pull up something here because I want to make sure I get this correct. Where we actually went down uh, into the basement. And while we were in the basement, let me get this. I'm going to open this up so I make sure I include all of this. All right, guys, hold on. I'm sorry I thought I had this prompt. Um, we were able to get some really neat EVPs. Okay, I'm almost there. There you go. And um, in doing so, what happened was I was so excited of the EVPs that I got that I brought the um, recorder upstairs. We all gathered up in one of the rooms, and I started playing the EVPs back. And this one gentleman that came through, uh, when he would talk with us, uh, he would use more sentences. Uh, sometimes EVPs will just use one word. They'll say like help or yes or maybe something of that nature. But he would say sentences like, um, I'm thinking, let me see, um, he would say things. Uh, I asked him, if, was it possible for him to speak with us? And he says possible. Um, anyway, and he says a lot more. But in the video, as I'm holding it out and people are listening to the video, uh, the, the video, I, I say what he says after each time he says it. So therefore you'll be able to hear quite a bit of uh, uh, communication with him uh, as we are uh, picking up on who this is, who this gentleman is. And we feel strongly that maybe it was the same gentleman that showed himself to us. We're, uh, uh, there, sometimes that's the hard part in doing investigations. Investigation is just what it says. Investigate to find out, to find the truth. Um, a lot of times we don't get validation on uh, exactly who they are. Sometimes we do and sometimes we don't. We did not on this particular uh, case. We did not get a lot of identification other than the little boy. I think the little boy gave us his name. But anyway, I want to play this video for you now so that you can listen and hear some of the uh, EVPs that we got when we went down into the basement. Uh, I just had a recorder out and uh, we picked up the little boy. Um, he did a great video. Oh, and he says his name too, too. Uh, so it's a spirit guide or spirit or technician or whatever can come through and maybe translate for us. We got to talk to him. Is that possible? That's possible. And then we get a little static. That's static. He says, I don't know, two times. I don't he know. He says, I beg. Mm -hmm. Maybe. Are you happy? Are you 
I thought he says, I don't know, maybe 26. That's what I'm thinking. Happy. I said, are you happy? And he said, happy. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And that's when we got the PX out, and then God, he started saying all these Okay, I hope you could make some of them out. Sometimes you have to listen to it again over after I've explained what we just heard. So I think you could probably go back into the YouTube and, and you know, move your little, little dot over <laughs> and be able to replay that. You'll be able to hear those voices a little bit a, a more clear. Mm -hmm. So then, of course, uh, another time when we were... Uh, I think we were upstairs in one of the upstairs room. Can't remember which room. I didn't take really good notes at, on this particular uh, investigation. I think a lot of a lot of times when I do big groups, I get a little distracted, distracted, and I don't sometimes do the things that I normally would do on a first time investigation. And normally, I when I get my EVPs, I labeled them just a little bit better. Unfortunately, on this particular investigation i had a lot going on and so this these i'm going to play two more really neat evps that we got during this investigation at the boone tavern now um on one of the evps that came through he was a male and so i asked him a question and then uh i think the, uh, i don't think we got a, 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 an answer on the first question and then the next question i think i asked if he could give us a name and he says, uh, I have no name. And that's the one, I'm going to play that for you now. You heard this. I think he says, I have no name, God, like he was aggravated for us. Uh, so, but you can go back, hopefully, and uh, listen to this again over and over. That's why, I like to, uh, that's why I like to put these things on YouTube so you can do that. Now, the next voice uh, that I'm going to play, uh, I think uh, on this particular one I was... Mm -hmm. I don't know if I was still in the basement or if I kept up, came back upstairs. But anyway, the whole place, no matter where you go, the rooms, the basement, the kitchen, you get a lot of activity. So I was very happy with that. So this one is, I think I asked a question. I'm not real sure, but I got the EVP that says, you're so brave. We got a little bit of meter activity early all right i say we got a little a bit of activity activity earlier and as i say earlier listen because while i'm saying earlier you'll hear you're so brave so let me play it one more time we got a little bit of meter activity earlier okay so you'll hear it you're so brave um and so you know we were very very happy to to get uh, these uh, EVPs and to get the cooperation of all our meters working. So um, uh, again, I hope that you'll enjoy uh, watching this particular um, uh, YouTube on this ghost investigation because I think this is the first time I've actually added a video to a video. So we'll hope that that works out and I hope you'll have a lot of fun and again, maybe um, if you are a novice or a, a seasoned ghost hunter, these videos that I'm producing right now will help you. I hope, hopefully, they will. So, t so stay tuned because I'll be doing a few more of these. And uh, so, and I hope you will uh, take you, uh, take the time out to like and subscribe and hit that little bell icon. That way, it can remind you when I have posted a new one. And also, uh, if you go to my website, www.ghosthunter, 
Well, that didn't come out right. Ghosthunter.com. And I have a blog there, and you can read the blog. And then you can read about other things that, that's going on with me and about the ghost walk and, and those type of things. So thank you for joining us, and I hope you enjoyed the tape. Thank you.